Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the eternal voice from heaven, the anointed and beloved one, the spirit moving over the waters. As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ, crucified and risen. God who searches us and knows us, you have shown us what is good, and we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive us our sin and show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the reign of heaven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? It is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom will be the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water 
whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You will raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and the righteousness endures forever. It is well with those who deal great, generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor. A reading from 1 Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit of and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understand this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within. So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him but we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket 
but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until it is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. The children come forward, please. There we go. <laughs> well, good morning. So glad you're here. Oh, here we come. Any more? Any big kids want to come? You know what that is, don't you? What is it? A salt shaker. Yeah, I bet you have one of those on your table at home, don't you? Huh? And you know what you use it for. Mommy makes food and sometimes uh, she'll tell you you might want to add a little salt. Well, I don't know why. Mommies make the best food, don't they? Well, I know my mommy did and so did my wife. That's why I got all this. <laughs> well, salt's very important. You know, it's really amazing. One of the things that Mrs. Schmid, my, my wife, made me and the boys do. If we had a sore throat, she would mix salt in water and really put a lot of salt in there. And we had a gargle. You know what a gargle is? You know, you like that. And that helps to kill the germs in our throats that causes us a sore throat. And salt sometimes is used to heal wounds. And sometimes it's used to purify. And sometimes we have to put it to things so that the flavors that are in what we want to eat come out stronger. It's very good. Well, Jesus said that you, you are the salt of the earth. Well, now, as a grandpa, I think I would, if I was doing that talk in front of the disciples, I think I would have said, you are the sugar of the earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't you get called sugar sometimes? Yeah. Yes, I knew so. I knew that. I knew that. Yes, salt is very important. And so... And then Jesus said, we are the light of the world. And all I have to see in a child is a smile. Can you smile for me? Oh, gosh, that, that just, that tickles me from one end to the other. Okay? Even when they did it. <laughs> okay? Well, let's, uh, let's thank Jesus. Ready? Hold your hands. Close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for these children. You've given them to us to raise, to teach, and to be the salt of the earth and the light of the earth. Help them in their growth. 
Help them also in their family life. And this we all pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Okay, thank you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry that it's come to this, that because of Pastor Menzer's illness, I'm the one she turned to as the one chosen to speak, to speak the word for this day. And I'm thrilled that it has come to this, for this too is what I am, through my baptism, consecration, ordination, which even though I resign from a call, is still a part of my life through association with God, my Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, my Savior, and the Holy Spirit, my guardian. I once told a friend of mine that, um, well, it was Steve Feldman, that I think God doesn't know I'm no longer on the roster of the ELCA because I had been getting called on to, to visit people in the hospital who, over the last five years, in several cases, it's been to people who had about that much time left. And today they're very vibrant people. Uh, and Steve said to me, well, I think God has you on his own roster. And I thanked that for, thanked him for that moment. It sure put a good kick in my walk. So, here we are, and I'm substituting, and Let's have a ball. Epiphany is a season of seeing things anew by a way of a special light, if you will, that overcomes the darkness of our thinking, our visions, our relationships with one another in Christ. Now, this morning I had to get up a little earlier than normal on a Sunday morning because I had to come in here and get things straight with me. And... Uh, I'm sitting at the breakfast table, and uh, I have a window that faces the north, but I can also see the west. And right out there was this great big white moon. And I watched it as I was eating. And by seven o'clock, it was gone. It had made its passageway, but not as far as it had to to get out of sight because clouds were coming from the west to the east and hid the, hid the moon. And I thought, this is going to be a great day, for the God of creation has everything in its order. And I'll tell you, it was exactly at 7 o'clock when that moon disappeared. Well, that's one light that enlightens our lives. As it, story creation says that it was the light to guard us through the night. Well, Isaiah illuminated the harshness and disobedience for people of his day with pointed answers. The people mumbled, and they mumbled. Well, their mumbling was rather astounding. Um, it's written in such a way as it, it, it sounds a little bit like what, uh, what uh, Isaiah was saying. 
Uh, well, I got the wrong page. Anyway, he, he uh, told them that they fuss because they fast and they don't think God even pays any attention. And what good is our fasting? And Isaiah turned it around and said, the problem with your fasting is you don't do it the right way. You fast for yourselves. And you are not to fast for yourselves. You are to fast for one another. You are to fast in such a way that you can help the poor to have something to eat. That you can take care of their needs because they have no way to do their needs. Well, without even knowing what the lessons for today were on Thursday during uh, lunch with Pastor, in response to a question I said, it's all got to do with this. If we are going to be called Christians, we need to act like we are Christians. For Isaiah, he's telling his hearers and or readers, this is what others must perceive from your actions. And then your light shall beam forth like the dawn. And this can be taken as personal and communal advice. I want to share something with you. On January the 4th, I had to preach a sermon for a great friend of mine in Carlisle. His name was Jimmy George. The George family ran a florist shop. And Jimmy was quite a philanthropist. He bought a hotel in Carlisle, refurbished it, and donated it to an organization, and it's now a house for battered women. The church needed new parking area and a um, uh, dry cleaning business was nearby and it went out of business. He bought the business, tore down the, the facilities, repaved it, had it, had the lines painted and donated it to the church. He started an organization in Carlisle called um, Carlisle Opportunity Homes got it started, got me involved, and then he left and made me chairman. And what we did was we would buy up lots, vacant lots, and we would construct affordable housing for people, and they got it for cost. Well, that was a real thrill. I didn't have to tell anybody what this man did, but I did tell them why he did it. You remember a couple of weeks ago, little Wyatt was baptized? Now this is the first time, it wasn't the first time we had a baptism here, but it's the first time I paid attention to what the parents' responsibilities were. And they didn't used to list them in that service. And one of the things that's listed is that you teach your children to care for the needy. Well, I left everybody know that Jimmy George's parents fulfilled that responsibility in a great way. Well, go a little further. I get a burning thrill in my bones when I know that our youth are going to go in town to feed the hungry, to care in many ways for the homeless and or poor with clothing and support through their caring. The needs of people become illumined to these young people. Not everybody has it as good as we do. And that's just one example of moving off site to take God's love to others in the name of our Lord. But it is the fulfilling of how we are the rear guard for people in need. And that's why Jesus pointed it out to his followers that they are the salt of the earth. 
I learned while making candy just how important salt is. If I was making a batch of caramel and forgot to put in the vanilla and you tasted it, you would hardly notice. But that wasn't the case with forgetting the salt. That's because the salt causes the vanilla to become stronger in its taste equivalent. And so Jesus said, what good is salt if it has lost its taste? Well, for saying that, he said, you are the light of the world. If when you are at a restaurant with your family or by yourself, and you take the time to offer thanks to God for, the, for this sustenance, obviously some will think you're just a show-off. Well, so what? Let them think. Others will take the opposite thought. How meaningful that was to see someone pray in a restaurant and maybe do so themselves. And being the salt of the earth, we are also being the light of the world. So again, I say, if you are a Christian, act like it. When Jesus said, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, don't let that abass you too much. Meaning their righteousness was all show. So your righteousness must be totally for the sake of others, not yourself. All of the ministries of this church are ways in which we can fulfill being the illumination that will draw others to Christ. To see Christ, see Christ's love of the earth and or the light of the world. Our quilt minister, I think about this because I guess it's no secret that uh, Marilyn and I are rather friendly. And uh, so I got to see firsthand all the things that that outfit of women have created for cancer patients in various places, hospitals, etc. It's not to show off the quilt maker's beautiful works. That's just how that, that these things work out. But it does show their zeal for caring for people with that horrible disease. I think they're well onto something like 400. The same is true of our organization. It's called Stitches. What, how, how do you say it? Say it louder. Yeah, okay, thank you. What this is about is stewardship of life. It's about how we use our lives, how we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to fulfill the wishes of God for humanity and his creation, something we are all a part of. It's like being this, well, I have to tell you this now, but my... I was going to do some trick with the kids. Uh, it was 10 spikes, 10 16 penny nails. Okay, first I drove a knife, or I drove a uh, spike into a block of wood. And then I was going to tell them, now I have to stack all these other nails on top of that one nail. Well, how I was to do this was I was to put, lay one nail down this way and then lay the other nails on top of it, putting the heads just on the other side of the arc, like this, you know. Okay, then on the apex of all those nail heads, I would lay the other nail, cross it. Then I could put my fingers on the bottom nail and lift it up and the nails wouldn't fall off. And then I would move it over and lay it on top of the other nail. 
and that was to tell the kids how important we are to each other. We can be the, the spike on the bottom or the spike on the top, or we can be one of any one of the other spikes. Well, I practiced and practiced and practiced. The nails got rusty laying down in the basement. I had done this before here uh, back in the 80s, and it worked. But because the nails were rusty, they wouldn't stay on that other nail. That's why I came up with a salt idea. Well, so it's like being the spikes that hold all the other spikes together. It looked like a trick, but no, it was using how the spikes can hold on to one another and the other on top. It's how we are important to each other and how we can be the lamp to brighten the road of life ahead. Later in the service, we will be passing the peace to one another. Today, I want you to concentrate on what that might mean to the persons to whom you greet with the peace of, Lord, of the Lord to be with them. And as they respond, what that can mean for you. It's not meant to be a quick greeting. Well, it's nice to see you today thing. It's an uplifting salute for each other. It's being the nails held together in faith and spirit, just like we are held together through our baptisms by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us in the baptismal function all of which came to us by way of the word spoken and the water drizzled. Or maybe some of you were completely submerged. This is the mortar that holds us together in faith. Being the light of the world starts with each of us here today and the day after day. And because of whose we are, for all with whom we are in contact with our daily routines. So go, my children, light up the world. Amen. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Trusting that God hears us, let us pray for the church, the world, and those in need. Holy God, it is your desire that all people might come to know you intimately. Lead our communities into deeper relationship with you. May your church radiate your righteousness to all whom we encounter. Hear us, O God. God of creation, you quench the dry ground, bringing water that sustains life. Satisfy the needs of all the earth so that all living things bear witness to your verdant grace and continue to shout your praise. Hear us, O God. For glory, during your time here on earth, you were crucified by powerful rulers who did not understand you. Grant leaders in our day wisdom and discernment that they may recognize you in the lives of people they serve. Hear us, O God. God of justice, you free us from the oppression that binds us and exhort us to serve one another. Liberate us from all fear, bigotry, and greed, and set our hearts and minds on love, equality, and justice. Hear us, O God. God of life, you reveal your serving love to us through the power of your Spirit. Bless those among us who are preparing to encounter your invigorating will in a new way, especially those preparing for or affirming baptism. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And O Lord, we pray for all those who are listed in our bulletin, and we include also the Spencer lady. Your mercy is great. Now, God of eternity, we give you thanks for the lives of the saints who have pointed us towards faithfulness to you. May we trust in your endless mercy and grace. Hear us, O God. Confident that you are able to accomplish more than we even dare to ask, we bring these prayers before you, believing in your saving grace revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Share the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, William. I'm going to come back to sing with you. Thank you. I was hoping.
Holy and mighty, merciful Lord. All full of your glory and great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance. Now we need to run by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation.